Welcome back everybody and Kaizen Philosophy is finally back. As you probably know, uh, Fuji has released uh, version 3.0 of the XH2S firmware and I'm pretty sure you're always seeing, you're already seeing videos and read reviews and all of that. And of course the question is, is the improvement as big as Fujifilm has claimed it to be? In my opinion, it is a vast improvement over the previous uh, autofocusing system, which was already good. I wasn't complaining about it at all, but if you've seen my previous uh, video, have a look at it here, uh, you will probably know that there was something that needed uh, a little bit of fixing, especially when it comes to the stickiness of the tracking in some of the most um, tricky conditions, especially backlit conditions and all that, but also when it came to uh, low light and uh, low light tracking especially. So what is my experience with, the new, with this new firmware? I'm, I'll try to make this video as short as possible. I was supposed to test it also in a pretty competitive environment when it comes to uh, rock climbing, but that gig uh, couldn't happen, so I didn't have that chance. But I tested a lot at home, and I tested against the way I tested the, the um, autofocusing system in the X-H2S uh, the, fir the first time. Same, similar con conditions, not same con conditions. So let's start with... Um, tracking my cats inside the house in a very dim con conditions. And what was impressive was the uh, possibility, the capacity of this uh, firmware to track uh, my cat, even if it was completely uh, dark, and it would still see its face, it would still see its body. Uh, of course, pictures were not as good because I was already 6,400 ISO and uh, I was a little bit on the... Um, uh, not the best uh, sh shutter speed for shooting those kind of scenes, but that uh, gave me immediately a little bit of confidence on what Fuji did with this with this firmware. And I kept testing uh, in these similar con condition again and again and again. And um, although not all the pictures are in focus, but I was using it with the 33 f1.4, which turns out to be good, but not the fastest in the world. Um, to track focus, uh, the results were pretty encouraging. Then I moved um, outside, tracking outside with uh, very uh, easy scenes and that went pretty good. I only had a few uh, missed shots, again cats mostly, because I only had that. And then I went to um, shooting uh, a little bit of video tracking autofocus, which is what uh, need a little bit more fixing because it's where you notice it the most. And I tested it with the 33 again in a backlit condition and I compared it against what I got in my uh, previous test. And uh, overall the result was that the autofocus was a lot stickier. It wasn't perfect yet, but it was a lot stickier in a condition where in the initial testing the autofocus was going completely nuts uh, trying to follow me. So in that specific uh, con condition, the improvement is pretty dramatic and it's, uh, it, makes, uh, it makes you trust the autofocus a lot more. Especially if you look at the, at the background, you, you see that in the initial testing, the focus would um, flicker back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, from the background to me and then to the background and then to me and, and over and over and over again, giving you that unpleasing result that the background was, uh, was not smooth. It's like flickering a lot. With the new firmware, this happens a lot more. It's not that it's not happening at all, but it's happening a lot less. <laughs>
conditions are not exactly the same. The light was not exactly the same. I was dressed differently. There were a lot of things that could have been different and it could have made the camera, help the camera uh, one way or another. Of course, I couldn't test it in exact same condition. Now it's winter. I tested it in uh, summer. It was impossible to get the same light in the same spot. So it is what it, what it is. But what you get is a pretty reliable autofocus also in video when, when tracking. And in more uh, like normal scenarios, such as, again, woodland, but uh, not hugely backlit, the previous uh, firmware was doing good, but would still do occasionally those uh, that flickering to the back. The new one is doing a lot better. And again, conditions may, var may vary, your mileage may vary and all of that, but then again, when you look at the footage and you look at what you get, you can definitely tell the other focus is way, way better than before. The only moment where um, I got a little bit frustrated was where I was trying to uh, photograph a peacock that was uh, heavily backlit. I could see the box, I wasn't recording the, uh, the screen because I, I didn't think I would. Uh, and I was having the box on the peacock, I could clearly see that the camera recognized the shape of the peacock, but there was basically no way of getting the peacock in focus uh, in that specific scene. It would either focus on the uh, fence that was behind the peacock or the trees that were behind the peacock. Uh, this is the only moment where I got disappointed with the camera. And again, it's all related to be heavily backlit. And last but not least, although I cannot show you pictures here, I uh, used the X-H2S uh, with the Sigma 18 uh, 250mm f2.8 at, at a child's uh, birthday party. And that the camera, surprisingly, was able to uh, find, find faces. Even when the room was completely dark, I would only lit the room with the flash. They were projecting something and it was completely dark. It would nail focus pretty much all the time and you would see faces when I wouldn't see anything in my EVF. So there's definitely an improvement there, and not only the tracking, but even uh, the low light uh, single shot focusing. It is, I would say it's uh, really impressive, and it makes me think that uh, Kaizen philosophy is finally back. We missed it, because just be honest, there haven't been that many Kaizen occasions in the last two or three years, I would say. This is something that uh, makes brings the camera to a level that it's probably comparable to uh, the best of the other cameras around. Of course, I don't have any of those, so I'm not throwing comparisons out of the blue and based on nothing. Uh, I would love to be able to try the Canon R3 or something like that, but it, I didn't have the, a way to compare them, but it's definitely better than before. And since already before it was good, it, it can it can basically you can basically rest assured that if there's a gap with others, that gap got narrowed by quite a quite a lot. And so I would say probably those differences are so minor that may not make the difference anymore. Again, it's based out of assumptions. I couldn't test it against uh, the best of the best uh, that is currently around, but I'm impressed. The autofocus is really good. It still needs a little bit of improvement, especially on backlit uh, scenes. But other than that, it tracks really well and it stays with the subject uh, in a more confident way, which is, at the end of the day, it's what you need when you're shooting uh, on a continuous sort of house where something happens fast, you need to be able to rely on the uh, on the tools that you have at your disposal. So I hope you liked the video. Uh, leave me a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, comment in the comment section below if you want to know more about it. I will keep testing it. I will have. Um, bird watching test that I want to do. I don't know when I'm going to be able to do it, but I'll, I will do it because that is something uh, that I consider important as well. 
Uh, and I guess that's it for today. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.